Hello, everybody. How's it going? <sighs> My name is Andrea, and you reached me at Knit LA, and I'm so glad you're here. And I'm looking forward to this episode, which I think might be a little bit shorter than usual because I've sort of had, um, I've just had a one track mind. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, just for those of you just joining, which there have been some, um, new viewers showing up and I'm so happy and I don't know how that happens, but it just makes me so excited because community for me is where it's at. That's what this is all about. And, um, you know, the more the merrier. So thank you so much for joining and subscribing and... Oh, no, no, no. And my dog makes some appearances. Actually, I have two dogs. This is Howl, and Howl is affectionately the rascal. Um, and he was just chewing on a swatch, <laughs> which is per huge, let's just say. When he was a puppy, he was destroyed many, many skeins and balls of mohair. He seemed to always gravitate towards the mohair. Anyway, let's hope, fingers crossed, he's gonna be cool. Um, anyway, uh, I'm a knitter, I'm a painter, I'm a mom of three kids. My eldest daughter just had a birthday on the 8th and she turned 19, which kind of blows my mind. Um, yeah, so the weather here has changed dramatically. It's now like 85 degrees, although not today, thankfully. I can wear my, my new sweater. Um, yeah, so it's supposed to rain tomorrow. You know, I love, I love a rainy day. Um, gives me all the excuses to just like a little hibernate with all the wool and all the needles. Anyway, oh, I did bring a notebook. Um, anyway, let's, let's start, yes, with what I'm wearing, which I have some things to say about. So this is the Sunday morning, Easy Like Sunday morning sweater designed by Melissa Clulo, previously of Espas Trico and the Yarn Purveyor Sonder Yarn Co. This is a free pattern that, it's sort of amazing that all of these incredible patterns, this is my second pattern of hers that I've knit up. Both were free, both incredible. Just incredible pieces that I have enriched my wardrobe and that I just want to wear all the time. So again, this is the Easy Lake Sunday morning sweater and I knit it with Sonder Yarn DK. And the main colorway uh, is French Press and I held it with a mohair called, uh, they call it Halo, the colorway is Horsetail. Both of those things, coffee and horses, um, tick some of the most amazing, meaningful, um, critical things in my life. So I grew up riding horses and yeah, horsetail. I mean, it's just a brilliant name. So this is the color that it turned into and I will stand up and I thought it would be nice to show with the black underneath, although you can kind of see my pants. So let me come a little closer. It's a beautiful neckline. Let me hold my hair away. So it's a folded neckline. Um, it's a two by two rib. And I actually went down a needle size because I'm a very, very loose knitter. And so I used uh, the needle size was US nine and a seven for the ribbing. Um, this is a quiet knit. There's no hassles. There's no struggles. Unbelievably, this was the first time I've ever done a raglan with a knit front back 
technique, which is really simple, but also just, I mean, it's just so nice. It's just such a nice, mellow design. And I know a million people have made this sweater, so I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but this is just to say that this is a wonderful silhouette. It's got kind of a boxy, drapey fit. What's that? Of course, there's always dog hair in my knitting. So you can see it's really drapey, boxy, but the sleeves are pretty fitted. And I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about that because typically I don't like a super fitted sleeve, but I wanted to just trust it and do it. And I also knew I could change it if I didn't like it. And, you know, I actually really like it. I like it because I think it really works with this sort of boxy um, body. To have a slimmer, kind of fitted arm. I actually did go up a needle size. I went to a 10 for the sleeves, as I usually do. Um, just to give me a, a lot of nice room underneath here. So I think this is, it's kind of in my category of like the things I'm gonna wear the most. The things, the sweaters, the knitwear that I do wear the most in terms of garment knitting are, I would say first my Sila sweater designed by Jonna Hayatella of Lina Magazine, the Lento, also by Jonna, the uh, Everyday Sweater by uh, Drea Renee Knits, the Classic Cozy Raglan by Jessie May. I mean, these really, those four are my go-tos and they're always just right. They're comfortable, they're, they look great, they're stylish, they fit well, they're wonderful designs. Um, so yeah, and yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm really pleased with the outcome of this sweater and um, I definitely would like to make more. Um, I think next time I'm gonna choose another size. Like I had noticed that and I'm not even sure why I chose the size two. I think it had something to do with obviously the measurements and the pattern. But later as I was making it, I realized the samples that are shown on the pattern, um, which are really, really cute, are actually a size four, which is two whole sizes bigger. Now, you know, my, my waistline, it comes like below my belly button, sort of right at that hip line which is great, I love it. It's super wearable and I'll be able to, you know, wear it all the time um, as soon as, you know, it cools down. <laughs> um, anyway, I just love it and I, it's, anyway, the whole, the whole thing, the yarn, the silhouette, the fact that there are so many opportunities to customize to fit you your body, your style. Um, it very may well be that the next time I make this, I decide I would like to have a slightly straighter, fuller sleeve, in which case I can do that. So, but it's, it's, it's a wonderful pattern and I, there are so many Espostri Co. patterns, free, by the way, that I want to knit. I have a bunch of my favorites and um, so far I only have glowing reviews. So yeah, if you've knit one of these, let me know. I know mil I know there are just so many people who have knit this and knit it happily. Um, I would like to knit one without the mohair. So even maybe just the, the, um, the DK, weight yarn, but just by itself. I loved how it blocked out in my um, Sunday morning shawl. And I know the mohair gives it sort of this one, a lot of structure, 
Um, but I'd love to have one that's even more like drapey and has tons of movement. So yeah, that's my, my finished beautiful sweater. It really um, didn't take very long to make. Um, and I was extremely focused on it because it was just so beautiful and I was so excited. <laughs> I pretty, it, I pretty much gave it all my attention with the exception of like, you know, a couple rows here and there, um, on some other projects. For example, like, 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 I'm going to share this big guy later. Um, my Linnaeus shawl, I'm really getting there. Like I'm almost finished with this shawl, which is amazing. Um, Cause it sort of seemed like it was going on forever. So this shawl that I'm about to show you is the Linnaeus shawl by Tati Lutzak. Also Tati's Garden on Ravelry. And she is an incredible designer. Oops. Uh -oh. um, and she, this is one of the shawl patterns that she designed. Oh my goodness, I am really in a huge tangle here. I guess I should have done this before. Um, there's many of her things that I would love to knit too. She is a wonderful knitter and a prolific designer. So there's always like ugh, something new happening. Okay, this is really messed up because it is stuck and I don't want to break it. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm going to have to take the ring off. Anyway, um, the Linnaeus is a color work and textured pattern shawl. I do not know how this got stuck on the weirdest plate in the weirdest place. Oh God. All right. Well, it might be hanging. Um, color work, big, generous, gorgeous shawl. And I really wanted to practice um, my fading because I'm not, a, I didn't really get in on the fading when it was so popular. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was Andrea Mowry that kind of started that craze. Is that correct? Stephen West? I don't know. They both have done a lot of patterns with the whole fade technique and I, it never drew me in, but now it is because I love this idea of blending colors, blending yarns. I have a massive stash that I'm trying to work through and shawls are the perfect way to do that. And I just love the idea of, um, working, working it all together. So this is the top of the shawl. And the top is the Farmer's Daughter Fibers. It's a really beautiful strawberry, am I on the right side? Yeah, kind of strawberry pink, um, really strawberry, like a strawberry milkshake color. And I'm also holding that with some Rowan Cashmere Haze, which very sadly is out of production. And the people that are selling the rest of it are really jacking up the prices. So I haven't, I haven't bought any more, but it is a gorgeous yarn and I don't know why it was discontinued. So basically I am kind of using a speckled yarn throughout with a mohair. My flowers are done in Nutidin yarn. Um, this is this kind of really gorgeous sky blue color. This is the color of the California skies, especially as of late. Um, and the bottom color, which I did try to fade. There's a garter section here, which I really tried fading, but I don't think I did the job that I really wanted to do. Um, it doesn't quite, anyway, I don't know. It doesn't fade in the way that I would like it to. But I love the color work. Blossoms, um, 
I love doing them in Nutigen with a, you know, regular twisted yarn. It really adds so much dimension and it's puffy and it's sort of quilty and this is it. I'm like only ever <laughs> going to use Nutigen now for all these things. Also, it takes like no yarn to make these sweet flowers. Um, and, you know, I love this idea of dimension, three-dimensional, you know, knitting. The bottom color is La Bien Aime in Vintage Grello, and that is also a stunner of a colorway. Um, I've shown it on here before, but I'll show it again. Um, I'm also holding it with the same mohair. Uh, same colorway. I have a short window with which I can film, so that's why I'm kind of like losing my, my mind a little bit. Anyway, these are the beautiful colors, and I, I'm just so happy. I love this skein so much. It's like every color is so gorgeous in this. So it's coming along. I have a few more rows in the textured section, and then I have a garter section, and then I'm ready to block it. I love it. It's, I know it is gonna feel insane. I'm just super excited to wear it. I think this looks very springy, and it's gonna be very soft because of all the wool and the yarn that I'm using. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm loving this, and you know, this is my focus now for this week. The next couple weeks, I would like to finish this. Also because I really want to cast on another shawl. <laughs> but I, I'm really pretty much adhering. You know, I've, I've talked about this before, but I'm, I'm kind of giving myself some parameters because I know I can go crazy with cast ons and then it just lingers and gets dusty in my closet and it just, no, it's not good. So three is the magic number. Three is the magic number. And um, it's pretty much down to like a garment, a shawl and something else. So I've got two pairs of socks that, well, one pair is almost done and the other pair needs a second sock. So that's sort of my third project. Um, and then there are things like, you know, these mad cast-ons, which I did another mad cast-on, like I did with the <laughs> this sweater. Um, you know, I have been looking for spring and summer garment to knit. Mostly for the summer, because I really don't have any spring weight, you know, maybe except for a ranunculus, but it's still made with 100% wool and it's not the easiest to wear unless I'm going to be inside in the air conditioning. But, um, so I was like on Ravelry for days, literally days, just like refreshing, refreshing, and nothing was really speaking to me except for the seashell set, which I'll talk about in a minute, but not giving me all the good feels. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I really wasn't coming up with anything. And so I decided to look through my pattern library, which is plentiful. And I have a tendency to just buy a lot of patterns with the intent of like making them. And then obviously it's just too many patterns. So um, I went through my pattern library and I found an old design, an older design by, um, uh, Cafe Midori, Midori Hirose, and it's called the Muscari. And it, this is a sweater that I have wanted to make, like ever since I started knitting, I feel like garments, um, more regularly. So I was very excited to find that I already have this pattern. And as I was reading through it, 
I actually had the wool they used in, um, in the samples. So the wool is, if you don't know what the, the pattern is, it's a very beautiful kind of open work. Um, let me show you. How about I show you? I'll try and show you. Here we go. Well, that's kind of the back, but don't look at that piece of yarn. Um, anyway, it's a really beautiful stitch pattern and it's very like open. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's a very open design and it is in the shape of muscari. Now, for those of you that know what muscari is, it's also referred to as grape hyacinth. It's a spring bulb flower that comes, comes, yells out loud. If a, if a fragrance can yell, it is yelling. Smell me, intoxicate me. Yeah, I will intoxicate you. Um, I'm the muscari in that case. I love muscari. They are very, very special because they also last for about a day. <laughs> Cut in a vase. They also, they're here and they're gone. They have their moment and then they're gone. I believe they're in the hyacinth family, obviously. Grape hyacinth, that's sort of their pedestrian-ish name, grape. I guess it has a grape fragrance, but um, it's just so beautiful. And I realized on here that I have never shared my work prior to, well, prior, prior. Um, I owned a floral design studio. And um, what that meant was we did not deal with retail, but we had a wonderful, huge art studio, my business partner and I, and we made flower arrangements and sent them out into the world. We had lots of private home accounts. We did lots of events. And um, we really had the pick of the litter when we went downtown to buy the flowers at the flower market. So Muscari was always one of those like extra special, just extra special bunches that we could tuck in for someone and and know that it was just gonna blow them away. So yeah, I used to make, I used to do flowers. I used to sculpt flowers, beautiful designs. Um, we had a very um, specific way of um, arranging flowers. We, it was very much like a sculptural quilted layer upon layer sort of approach. And this is why we um, could only break even every month and why after I had my first child, it was just wasn't working for me to, it wasn't sustainable. So, um, but it was a wonderful period of time in my life and you know, I treasure it. So Muscari, so for that reason and just the flower in, in and of itself, just, I was just so excited. This is my time. This is the moment I'm going to make this sweater. And the yarn that is used in the sample and the yarn that I happen to have in stash is um, called Gilead. I believe it's Daruma Natura. Let me see if I can find a label. Darurum Natura, that's what it's called. Gilead, it is a worsted weight. It is the spongiest, look at that. It's just like boing, boing. It's like a stress ball. <laughs> um, I have never worked with this yarn and I'm totally, totally in love with it. Um, it is so soft. It is so round, even though I think it's a single ply. It is not fragile. It does not break when you're tugging too hard. So um, it's everything about this so far has just been dreamy. And I cast on, 
I want to say yesterday and look at how I've gotten so far. Um, I think I made a mistake somewhere, so I'm trying to like go back and figure it out. But this is going to be perfection. And they show it. There's a short sleeve version and a long sleeve version. I have enough. I have a sweaters quantity because I initially bought this yarn for a cardigan. Um, that just, I hadn't started and I just wanted to use it for this pattern. So I think I'm going to do a kind of a, not a bracelet length, but maybe a three quarter sleeve somewhere in between. Cause I would like to wear it in the summer. It's so light. It is light as a feather. And I feel like this is going to be a beautiful knit for, you know, summer nights. Is there any way for me to show you this pattern? I'm so in love with this pattern. I don't know, it's very hard for me to show you. But what's so sweet about it is the Muscari has these tiny, tiny little florets off a single kind of tubular pale green stem. And they just, and that, she was able to recreate that in this design and it's pretty special. So, <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. This is making me very happy. Um, the thing that is not making me happy, which I have completely put on the back burner, is the seashell set. Seashell set, which I'm super sad about because I do want the thing. Like I, I want the thing. And I bought a shit ton of yarn to make the thing. <laughs> but I did another swatch to kind of try and, you know, get the whole pattern. I don't even know if this is working. Is this showing? So it's basically this like, it's not difficult. The charts are amazing. It's easy to follow. I really dislike the yarn. The yarn is um, Isayer Trio 2, and I know people love this yarn. I don't like working with it. It's very crunchy and papery, and um, the color I got is bottle green, and it's kind of a marl with black, and um, I was having trouble reading my knitting. I wound up using like 25 stitch markers just to keep the repeats contained. So um, I wouldn't have to like kind of, you know, figure all that out, but it's not bringing me joy at all. And I've only gotten like, I don't know, 12 or 13 rows of the, you know, of the, the top done. I blocked the swatch. I mean, it's okay, but also I, I haven't gotten gauge yet. I decided to go down a whole needle size because of that. And I'm still not really getting gauge. Um, so yeah, it's a bummer. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I definitely needed to take a time out because I actually had to like restart <laughs> and stop and frog and restart three times. And so I was feeling very annoyed also because the yarn is just like not friendly. Like my hands don't enjoy it. And I'm very disappointed, but I do want the thing. So it's got, I've got to work this out inside myself. We'll see. Um, I also wanted to let y'all know <laughs> and to have it documented that I'm also returning to my Trinigan cardigan for those of you, mostly because there, is new, there are quite a few new people. And so I don't know if people want to go back in time, but um, I'm making the Trinigan, which is um, I think it's a couple years old pattern by Andrea Mowry. It's a wonderful cardigan. A lot of people have used spin cycle yarn to sort of get a color change effect. I decided I wanted just to do like a two color version. And so I am working with Jacob's fleece for the main part and this 
color, which is called Old Man Coyote, which I'm sorry, is the best name for yarn I've ever heard. Can you see it? Yeah, there it is. Old Man Coyote. This is Farmer's Daughter Fibers. It's a worsted weight and a, it's a special yarn. I don't know if they carry this all the time, but I did get it in a an indigenous collective monthly subscription. And um, look at this color. It is freaking gorgeous. So I'm doing the two colors gray, natural gray, and the yellow. And I love these colors so much together. And so I'm just kind of picking it back up. It's a um, mosaic color work sweater. I don't know what size I'm doing. I'd have to look. Oh, it, no, I, I do know. It's the third size. I'm doing the third size. It's a bottom-up construction. Um, I really like the, the wool and I love the wool together. It's really hardy and I want this by the fall. I want to wear it to Rhinebeck in New York. This is a perfect fall sweater to me. But it's a big cardigan and so I feel like I don't want to set myself up for not having it this fall. So it's back in my, in the ether of the work. Um, which I'm really happy about. And I love mosaic knitting so much. It's really chill. It's so easy to read your knitting. And um, excuse me while I just like wipe away a little perspiration. <laughs> it might not be the best day to wear this wool sweater. It's starting to warm up, but I'm gonna move, move sort of quickly through here. Um, so I mentioned before that I really, was like lost in page after page of Ravelry and like really struggling to find a design that I connected with and just felt, I was very frustrated to be honest because I want to make summer garments. And part of me was like, do you want to make summer garments? Does that really make sense? <laughs> it, I really live in quite a warm climate and um, I'm not sure it does make sense. Um, yeah. So sometimes when I, actually I was thinking about this because Haley over at Knit Weekend was talking a little bit, I think a couple weeks ago about knitting ruts and how people deal with that. And I did comment on her video and so I thought I would share it here too, because um, I've, I've never experienced a knitting rut. So I am a pretty obsessive knitter. And, you know, I don't know if that's a good thing <laughs> necessarily, but uh, I, it is what it is. And um, I don't say that in a joking way or a light way, because I truly am an obsessive knitter. Um, I have to be working with my hands. Um, I have several mediums, of course, that I become obsessed with. Like there were five years of like heavy painting and amazing, that was wonderful. Then COVID hit and it became, I already knit, but knitting became something really grand in my life. So back to the rut of which I don't experience, but I do experience like tiresome, like I'm just tired of looking at all this stuff that looks the same. And um, I do have some big picture projects. So these are projects that have absolutely no timeline. They are really just for comfort and pleasure alone. And I have shared in um, episodes past that I have a blanket that I started after my dad died. And that is a really special and important blanket. It's a knitted blanket. It is just growing and growing. And I have to figure out at one point, I'm, I would like to make it a rectangle, but so far it's just still in the growing process. 
Um, but another thing that I work on, which is right here, is another blanket. And the reason I'm sharing it is for a couple reasons, but mostly because in response to this idea of like knitting ruts, of which I don't experience, but people do. And um, even if it's like, I don't know what the hell to knit. I don't know what is calling to me, um, which is kind of how I was feeling on Ravelry. So this is a blanket that I'd like to share. It's really huge. Um, this blanket is a crochet. There goes the needle. This is a crochet blanket that I started. I love crochet. I learned how to crochet over the pandemic and that was a very exciting thing for me. Um, so I started this huge blanket and for our bed. So I measured everything out. I did all the stitches. I cast on, so I don't know which is the correct side, but I'm just gonna, it doesn't really matter. But, um, so this is what I started with. I started here and this is new to din. And so I was just kind of playing around with stitches and mixing the yarn and blah de blah de blah And then, you know, I started spinning and all of my earlier spins were sort of wonky and wobbly. And so I thought, well, this is a perfect opportunity to use them. So I have some wobbly. <laughs> the rest is hand spun. So um, the top part is new to din until you get to like the purple. And then the rest is all my hand spun. And there's no rhyme or reason, by the way. So basically I just had a bunch of skeins, like here's one. That's just not, I mean, it's gorgeous in terms of like, I love the color, but I, I spun it when I first learned how to spin. I didn't do what people say you're supposed to do, which is like, start with a white, Coriadale. No, I, <laughs> I had to jump in body, whole body, not feet first, just entire body. And you know, that's just who I am. So this blanket has a lot of fiber that I knit up as a beginning spinner and wasn't really sure, oh my God, what to do with it. But it's really pretty. I love this, like there's a really deep um, green in here. There's all these like cool, um, and I'm just kind of playing with stitches, like whatever. I really do like this um, granny square type, but it's got a lot of holes in it and I wanted something a little more dense. So now I'm pretty much alternating between, um, you know, like, what is it called? Half double crochet, single crochet, double crochet. And then I just started doing something, I think it's called the waffle stitch. Yeah, the waffle stitch, which is up here, which is also like crazy easy. Um, and I'm just, really having fun. This is like where I'm at. I'm on this row, finishing up with my little shrimp colored yarn. So this was something I did. I brought it out. We watched, oh, well, we were watching an incredible show called Ripley. I never talk about shows on here, but this is a really good show. It's on Netflix. Um, it's based on the book series, the talented Mr. Ripley. I hadn't seen the movie, so it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's creepy. Y'all should see it. So this is what I did. This is what I'm doing. When I don't, I was feeling totally overwhelmed with like all the Ravelry searching 
And I just was like, I'm gonna chill with my blanket. And I don't use a fancy needle. I have tried because there's nothing I would like more than to knit with one of those gorgeous wood handmade and I've tried. I don't think I have it here, no. But the one that my hand likes the best is the Clover brand needle. It's just a really simple plasticky rubbery needle. I'm using a 6.5 millimeter, which is a K, size K. And my yarn is, it's all over the place, but this is a perfect way. Um, I'm practicing some crochet stitches. I'm, the most joyful thing, obviously, is working with my hand spun yarn because I can, I can see like my evolution, you know? And um, I'm, I started spinning again very recently um, after like a two month hiatus and I don't, I, I, it's sort of muscle memory, but honestly, I'm kind of struggling. So I really need to like focus because I spun up some absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. I did a combo spin. Um, anyway, I'll talk more about it when I actually have it done, but yeah. Anyway, so this is what I do. If you're in a rut, just crochet a blanket or knit a blanket. I don't know. For me, it feels good to crochet because it's one needle. It's very similar to how I knit, to be honest, the way I hold the yarn. Um, but, and I really like it. It's chill. You can do it while you're watching something. So that is an ongoing project with no end date. And it's made to fit a king size bed widthwise. But the funny thing is, is like, I think we're going to get a queen size bed. So it'll be very um, drapey, but that's okay. Um, what else did I want to share? Um, oh yeah, I will share, wait, what did I want to share? Oh yes. So I shared this on Instagram, but I thought I would just do it here because these colors are insane. Look at these cute skeins. Look at these. Oh my God, they're so cute. Look at that color. These are the sweetest skeins of yarn. They're Diamond Lane Birdie. One is the baby, the regular Birdie. And this color is called Chalet Chic. It is the most delicious minty green. It's perfection. And it's gonna be combined with this beautiful powdery blue called Butter mint. I mean, these colors are so gorgeous. And these, this is the big birdie, this is the regular birdie, and these are going to be marled and knit into the party bow. So, for a friend. Um, so, anyway, for those of you that might be new or just joining, I released a pattern like earlier this year, close to my birthday and um or on my birthday yeah in january called the party bow and it's basically um you can watch the episode which i talked about it but it's basically uh these two yarns put together make a gorgeous playful warm lovely accessory it's a big oversized bow it's it's got humor. It also looks very chic. Um, people are doing some gorgeous versions, like this marled version that I just have been recently seeing on Instagram. It's just, my first one was marled too, and it, it's just a wonderful way to use up a couple skeins that you don't know what to do with. It doesn't have to be made in the fluff, but I will say adding the fluff just gives it dimension it gives it strength too so you can really make a beautiful bow it's a year-round accessory because I actually think this is great for the winter time too when it will keep you very warm especially if you wear it with a coat um, so that's gonna be the next party bow and I will link the pattern below and then 
I want to share a new acquisition just because it's so beautiful, but <laughs> I also, I'm not sure that these colors are the right colors, but um, so as I said prior, before we, um, I hosted a Zoom, which was a blast. And Nicole from Mork Made Fiber Co. was wearing, I think, the most stunning Lune shawl. Lune is a design by Natasha Hornby of Moonstruck Knits. And Nicole was wearing this like lavender with black, I think, and cream. And it just was absolutely like took my breath away. So I want to make one and I was very inspired by Nicole's color choices. And I also really wanted to work with this Sunday sport. I hope it's showing. So this is Sunday morning Lux sport, 65% BFL, 25% Massam, 10% cashmere. Um, this more pink color is called Cut Flowers. And this more lavender color is called Kiss and Tell. And the pattern calls for, I think, one, two, four colors. Excuse me, four colors. So I wanted this to be my main color, this to be a contrast, and I wanted to hold one of these, this is Halo, in, um, I think the black is called Leonard and the brown is called Coffee, no, Cold Brew is this one, uh, with some Nutidin for some of the color work because I want it to like, you know, be a little poofy. So, That's what this is purchased for. My only concern is that the contrast might not be vivid enough and that these might kind of blend together. So I'm gonna make a swatch and figure that out. But these colors, I mean, everything, look at this black. This black is like insanely gorgeous. Um, yeah, so this is, this is the intention. It's a new, it's a shawl that I really want to make this year. Um, I can't decide if it's going to be the next shawl after the Linnaeus because, you know, I also have a, a stunning kit, which I showed on here for the Striation Valley shawl. No. One of those big, huge, newer this year, undulating patterns by Stephen West. And I bought a kit that is mind blowing, which I showed on a previous episode. So if you wanna see the colors sooner than waiting for me to cast it on. So it's between those two. It's either gonna be Lune shawl or it's gonna be striation. All right. Oh, last thing. I got the cutest book. I cannot recommend it enough. I love knitting books and I love reading knitting, knitting books. <laughs> and I love Summer Lee as a sock designer. I've been knitting her socks for, you know, a couple of years now and they're just so joyful. And this, this book, gives a lot of information, a lot of technical ways of approaching even the most basic of socks. They're, the way she combines colors is just so amazing. And um, I'm just very excited to have this book because I think it is, it is so fun. Not only that, but she teaches like so many different heel techniques and toe up and cuffs and colors and all the things, 
all the things. And it's just, it's a real joy to read. It's a real joy. So I also recommend this book. It is so much fun. It's been on my nightstand and I'm just getting, I love reading it. I really love reading it. Okay. So that is my story. And I'm so glad that y'all hung out with me today. It is gorgeous. I don't know if you can hear these birds singing, but holy moly. Can you hear that? The birds are singing, the sun is shining. There's a little breeze. Anyway, I would love to hear what you're up to. What are you knitting on? I am approaching my one year podcast anniversary. Like, I think the next one is my one year anniversary. And so I wanna do something special. I wanna give a gift to someone. So yeah. I'm going to figure that out for the next episode because I'm just so excited and it's just, oh, I have had so much fun and I'm just thrilled to have this platform to reach you, all of you. It really makes me just so feel so full inside and, um, I never ever want to minimize this craft, this work, this hand work um, that I am so drawn to and so many others are too. And, um, you know, I would like to end with a story. I, this just occurred to me because I heard a very, very profound story recently, last weekend we had a sit down um, with my kids and with, you know, a large group of people and a woman, a Holocaust survivor came to speak to the group and she was a hidden child, which meant that she was hidden from the age of like one. I mean, she was a baby and um, she told her story is, amazing um what her mother and they took on another child as well so her mother was responsible uh, actually hiding keeping them hidden and safe and just kind of the horrors of that time in her life but one of the things and the reason why i bring this up right now is that she talked about one of the ways which sustained their survival was that her mother knit and her mother would knit, I'm not even sure what, maybe hats, maybe socks, but she was a very fast knitter and she would knit a few things and whoever the, the household person who was hiding, hiding them or someone from the underground would take her knitted accessories and sell them at the market. And that was how they could repay the people taking such great risks by hiding them and also get some nourishment, get some food, some basics, basics. So I'm not gonna go into her whole story, but that touched me so deeply in a way that, and of course this has been going on Knitting can sustain you, of course. It can make your clothes. It can um, keep, keep your family warm. This is, this is not a new concept, but when I heard it in the context of her story, um, yeah, it just, it never had occurred to me that knitting for survival. So I am sorry to end on kind of a somber note, but actually, it, I don't, I don't mean it to be somber. I just mean to share a, a new lens with which to view our craft, um, 
it was life-saving for them. So I hope none of us are in a position to have to ever, ever use knitting to save our lives. But um, I met someone whose family did. And I thought that was incredible. Okay. Um, I'm sending lots of love and light and spring and newness and re remaking and open heart and all the things that um, I aspire towards that I think that we all really need right now. And this connection is a huge part of that. So I thank you and um, I'll catch you next time. All right, take good care everybody.